Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel, Nursing Education Tutor. My name is Cheryl Spencer. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about defense mechanisms. Defense mechanisms. You learned about defense mechanisms in psychology. If you're a nursing student, one of your prerequisite course was the psychology course of defense mechanisms and you received your grade and oh my goodness, it's back. Well, it never really goes away. Defense mechanism um, must be understood so you can assess it and see how a patient is using it. So defense mechanisms are mechanisms that the human body uses to defend, protect themselves. It's ineffective coping, but it's the human body's way of protecting itself. So in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about five common ones that you'll see. There are plenty of defense mechanisms, but five common ones that I think every nurse, nursing student in healthcare should understand in order to assist their patient. So when you talk about uh, psychology, of course, the great names come to mind. Freud, id ego, uh, Piaget, and Erickson. But regardless, um, they're still important and they, they come into play in, in nursing school and understanding how individuals cope and learn along the lifespan. For instance, you're going to teach a teenager perhaps different than you would teach a five-year-old or a 45-year-old. So with defense mechanisms, it's important to understand that they're not going away. It was just not a, a prerequisite. It's important um, content that you need. So defense mechanisms are means that the human body does to protect itself from perceived threat or real threat. So a perceived threat is feeling that someone may harm you or a real threat, no, someone threatens you. Um, in healthcare, a medical diagnosis, a change in your ability to function are perceived threats, uh, things that are potentially harmful. So uh, one of the main ones that people will talk about in healthcare is denial and, you know, it's not a river in Egypt. Denial. Basically denial, you're not accepting the situation. You're not accepting the results of the diagnostic test. A second opinion is, is okay, but how many opinions does it take for you to accept that it's not going to change? That's an example of denial. Uh, another example of denial is um, you're given, a patient is given from a provider, a nurse practitioner or a physician, uh, a diagnostic test came back and let's say the condition, um, it's cancerous, it's malignant, and the patient is not accepting that. That's an example of denial. And what we understand about denial from the evidence, in many cases, acceptance may not be happens the first day you're told, the second day, each patient differs. But to move through a process or even to get to a point of treatment, there has to be some sort of acceptance. And you learn later in order to teach the client, the individual or group, their family, they have to accept that um, of this need. So that's denial. So denial is an example of not accepting one situation, diagnosis, circumstance. Repression. Repression is another one from Freudian era where you, the unconscious mind suppresses negative thoughts and feelings and don't bring them to the surface. So what you probably have learned in psychology was about Oedipus and the Oedipus complex where Oedipus had sexual feelings toward a parent. Well, certainly don't want to act on those. So the human body suppressed that, so it could be repression. But as a healthcare uh, provider, healthcare giver, in order to help that person move through work on getting to a better place where they don't have those negative feelings, we have to understand that so repression doesn't allow the healthcare team to help an individual with that another one that sounds similar in terms is regression so regress you're going back 
and regression is where in a situation of stress, conflict, potential harm, the individual will go back to a previous period of time and that behavior will look like something that they did previously. So for instance, the example that's often given is that of a child who has been potty trained, able to independently know when they need to go to the bathroom and can handle that, finish and wash their hands. This child is now suddenly wetting themselves or even wetting their bed. Uh, so these are signs that we can teach a parent, um, or teach parents rather, if your child who has never wet the bed uh, and has been potty trained suddenly starts to wet themselves. Perhaps you need to talk to your healthcare provider to try to find out something, if something physically or something psycho psychology-wise is happening um, to your child. Um, displacement, this one, one that's often tested in nursing school because it's, it's more visible in the sense because displacement usually involves some type of action. It could be verbal words or physical action, touching, punching. So you can think of somebody, let's say um, I was angry at someone who did something to me, but the person's in such a position of power over me that I don't feel confident enough to tell them exactly what I think of them. Perhaps I would then, when they leave after whatever, I decide to punch the wall. Well, two things are gonna happen. Well, what exactly did the wall do to me and then I'm gonna hurt my hand and I'm not trying to hurt my hand. So I've taken my feelings toward the person that was mean to me and I've now displaced it on the wall. You'll see um, examples of this perhaps in a patient's room in healthcare. In a hospital, a patient receives a diagnosis that's informing them of a disease process that the outcome may not be great or whatever it is, it's going to affect their daily living and they're having difficulty coping with that. When they get the news, it could be a shock and they may not respond to the person who's giving it to them. The physician or a nurse practitioner leaves the room and 10 minutes later, patients in there slamming their hands on the bedside table or tossing something, that's displacement. So that's four. One last one I think I'll talk about is projection. So projection is where an individual um, projects feelings that they have, negative feelings that they have about themselves, and they project it onto another person. Okay? So an example of that would be, let's say an individual who has had difficulty with self-esteem, or if it's, if, and what's contributed to that is how they feel about themselves and they have some type of self-hate. How uh, projection works in that, instead of that individual have a conversation with a healthcare person or themselves in the mirror, a psychologist, some type of therapist, that I really don't feel good about myself, what this person will now do is interpret and say, everybody hates me. Everybody hates me, everybody hates me. So that's, project, that's projection. So instead of accepting, um, their own feelings about themselves, they project on, on themselves. So those are five examples of defense mechanisms and there are plenty more, so we get. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Defense mechanisms and five common defense mechanisms. I hope that helps. If this is your first time to my channel, welcome. I hope you stay, have a good day.